Yeah, yeah. cuz I felt we felt it that last okay, one. We kind of started to feel it. Yeah. Hey boo, how, yeah, how about you start this one off? Not like a bitch this time. <laughs> <laughs> This man ass, bro. <laughs> I like it. Why don't you start it off then? It's on you, bro. It's your yeah. podcast, bro. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's, it's scary on you, ass. bro. Nah, because I get the stuttering Why and shit. Why you do that, Harry? Welcome back to the 2% <laughs> Podcast. I am your host, Kianbu Fentress, and we got Ro Coleman, Harrison Ray here. Today we got a special guest. All right. Yes, we sir. got SEC Freshman Player of the Year. Uh-huh. A gold glove. Uh huh. Top prospect in this year's draft coming up. Talk to me. Top, top prospect coming up. Where, where he from? From the. Where 305? he from? Where he from? <laughs> 305 from Florida. Sunshine man. State. That's all you gotta say. From Sunshine State. We got uh, Enrique Bradfield, my guy. Yes, sir. Welcome, brother. Thank you. Welcome, man. Sir, sir. What's up with you, kid? I'm chilling. Everything's good. good Just got good. done with some tests, so. Hell yeah. Let's uh let's go and get right into it, man. Let's talk about the so we had a two percent podcast. So we're talking about college athletes, their journey to get to division one in their sport and just their experiences in those two to three, two to three, four years that they're there. And so talk to us about the process, recruitment process and like what it took to you to get to Vanderbilt. Yeah, I would say my recruiting process was pretty straightforward. Um, there weren't too many like hoops or hurdles that I had to kind of jump through. I kind of just played in high school and I played in travel ball. And um, that right there kind of took over for for me, uh, like the rest of the job, pretty much people had heard who I, who I was and, and what I could do. So um, some schools were interested, and I kind of got on the phone with those schools. But I know for a lot of people, it's not really like that, and they got to go to camps and stuff like that. And I say uh, just kind of be be like real wise about what camps you choose because some of these camps are just they're money grabs right. at some schools, and uh, the, the coaches aren't really looking to recruit out of their own camps. They're going out and looking on a summer circuit for like a, a bigger name or something like that. And then some camps actually really do use their their camps as a prospect, uh, like recruiting mm-hmm. trips. So that that's pretty nice to know. Uh, but once I kind of knew where I, what I was looking for in a school, I, I really narrowed it down to to Vanderbilt and a couple other schools. And what this was the place to be. Uh, Miami definitely having yeah. a chance to stay in my hometown was something that was big for me. Uh, so I kept that door open. LSU was another another school mm. I was looking at, mm. uh, but when it all came down to things, Vanderbilt was the best place for me. Well, uh, what put Vanderbilt over the what gave Vanderbilt edge over LSU and Miami? I'd say the culture. Yeah. Um, you guys have all been a part of it, so I, definitely you guys know what it what it's like, and it's it's different. Um, I see myself as a winner, so. Mm. I, I need to surround myself with people that are like minded. Facts. Really. So yeah, there you go. that was uh that was one of the main <laughs> things for me. I, I wanted to win. I still want to win and, and I'm just trying to be better. So putting myself around these people, that was the best decision for me. Got you. I guess like a two part question. Um so how do you think like your high school experience was a little different from us? Like social media started to play a real role. Mm-hmm. in like your high school experience like with the travel ball circuit and like i'm not going to put it on the equivalent of like high school basketball like that type of notoriety but you start to see some top end baseball prospects out of high school starting to get a little more notoriety via social media so like how did how was that for you and what type of role did that play and then you don't have to get into like money wise but like you definitely had some interest from pro teams coming out of high school so what was the determining factor in you not going and playing professionally and going to Vanderbilt? Yeah. Um, basically, social media played a huge part in in high school baseball at the time just for the, the reason that it put certain players on a pedestal. And even mm-hmm. that it put players on a pedestal, I was sort of like that in between where people – we're starting to to be like, this kid is for real, this kid's serious. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who doubted um, that I could go to the ne- like a higher level and, mm. and play the same way I was playing in high school. Um, just because my, my tool set's a little unique yeah. 
at that sure. time, everybody was more interested in launch angle and hitting yeah. home runs and, still and driving the ball. And that's still the case. But uh, I've been able to to come to college and do things that people haven't seen in a while. So it's giving like a, f a fresh outlook on the game. Um, so that's why social media was pretty big. They, they just kind of hyped up certain names. And once mm -hmm. certain names had a, had a narrative, they kind of just ran with it and been like, oh, this kid's a top player. So that was the, like the, probably the main reason like social media was, was big in high school uh, when I was coming through. Uh, and I, I had some, some interest in the draft, but it, was, it came down to what was best for myself and my family. And it just turned out it's like, I'm going to go to the next level. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to prove that I should be this, this caliber yeah. player. Team saw me as a good player, but they didn't see me as a first rounder or even anywhere near that at that point. Uh, so that, that kind of it left like a chip on my shoulder. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to go to the next level and I'm going to prove uh, to all these people that I'm, I'm I for mean, real. Yeah. Like I'm there. So I think that was like, the main factor with me going to school. And on top of that, I'm going to Vanderbilt. I could get he a, can't get uh, no a degree oh, that yeah. nobody really, you can't take that away from anybody and you guys have it. Yeah. So that facts. that is something that you know how hard it is to get. It's a life insurance policy. <laughs> yeah, exactly 100%. that. You talk about that chip and you talk about choosing Vandy because you want to be a winner in the culture, but ultimately like, you know, you gotta be a dog to go be a school like Vandy and play. And, Obviously, the numbers you, the things you've been able to accomplish, like coming up, when did you figure out you was that dude and when did you find that dog within yourself as a ball player? It's something I've had for a little while now. Uh, I'd probably say like I could vividly remember being 11 years old and sitting on my bench on my travel ball team. Mm. Barely playing, yes. they would bring mm. me. They would bring me in the pinch run. Mm. So like that, that was something that kind of like pissed me off. Yeah, it, it sticks in my mind when I when I think about why I have such an edge or or a chip. And it's like when I got to thirteen, fourteen, I started to to mature a little bit, and then mm. that's when I really started to take over. And it was like I'm playing against those same kids who I used to sit behind, yeah. and I, I'm doing my thing. So that was something that is like. Now, now I'm taking this for real because I remember when I used to sit right behind you. Uh, so I'd say like that was probably the, the biggest. That moment was where I, I knew I I had that chip. No, that's real. Okay, yeah. And so rewind a little bit back to the social media aspect. Talk about talk about. Do you think, especially now, it's even. It's bigger now than yeah. it was when when you were in high school. Definitely. When, when non existent, we were in high school. Yeah. Okay. But positive or negative? And I mean, from, because now they guys are talking about off the screen, nine year olds now are doing perfect game tournaments and All Americans. And it it's starting like, like, give me like the pros and cons of the social media thing and how it affects the parents, how it affects the high schoolers. The middle school, like, just solved the whole culture of, like, baseball now where it is. Yeah. I think it's more negative. Okay. And that's just my personal uh, I agree. opinion towards I agree. it. It gives all these kids a, a false narrative of who they are just mm. because you have perfect game or baseball America. This kid is so good or this yeah. kid is this. Yeah. So kids just have – they grow up with a, a false sense of uh, – Confidence. Of confidence – then when it comes to the parents, it's like every parent is going to say their kid is the best, but that's for the most part is all of it's not true. And Cap. is you gotta you gotta be realistic with it. It's like my my dad never grew up telling me I, I was so good at this, I was so good at that. It yeah, was hey, was you gotta trying. work here. <laughs> what? If you Damn, want no. if you want to go and do the things you want to do, you gotta work hard. You gotta put in the time, and it's not my kid should be doing this because he's so good. And I think that's where uh, where our travel ball game is at. And daddy ball. I actually went to a game probably like over Thanksgiving break and I, I watched 10 year olds play and they, they got the pants over the knees, yeah. the, the sunglasses. Right. It's, ridiculous. And it's ridiculous. It's just crazy from what it's trying to look good. To. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's but trying to look good. game not there. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you're giving kids nine, you all American and you're ranking travel ball teams when the kids are nine. It's like, when I was nine, I played the game to have fun. 
meet some cool people and then whose house were we going to after the drink game? Drink Capri Suns and go swimming. Yeah, no. And that's all it was. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's definitely, it's a weird, it's a weird balance that we've gotten to now. It's like, we're trying to specialize these kids at such a young age, but like you're saying, like when we were younger, we were just playing to have fun. Like you were playing multiple sports. I'm sure you played multiple sports. You played multiple sports. So like you see all these kids now they're playing one sport. So, I mean, that's another topic to talk about, but, um, I guess for you, I, I guess we can we can get the hat out of the bag. Like speed wise, like we're all we're all pretty fast. Um, when did you know that you were fast? But like fast, fast. Nah, because like, people can run. Like I, before you even answer this question, like watching the games on TV, and I hear the announcers talk about other players. Oh, this guy can run. Yeah. Or he has wheels, and I'm Everybody, like. He's average. Yeah, no. Nah, like, everybody be throwing, oh, he's fast. He can run. And it's like, you can, can't be throwing like, that out bro, for everybody. Like, you can't just use that word so loosely like that. I'm like, he's... he's hey, bottom apparently, kick. everybody's fast. Yeah, everybody's nowadays. fast. You know, so like, we got to separate the category of he floats, okay? This, this yeah. guy can move different. So, like, you can talk about, like, use, like, your speed and when, when did you know and... And was um, it, like, natural for you or do you, like, do you still train it? Like... Yeah, so... uh I probably knew when I first got to high school. Mm -hmm. uh, our high school falls were, they're a little more probably, it's kind of what Vanderbilt fall is. Yeah. Not as much baseball to start. Where'd you go to high school? And I went to American Heritage. So uh, okay. we use uh, Mike, Mike Smith. He's the head football mm -hmm. coach and he was yeah. a strength coach at that time. He would take us to the track and we were going to run. So basically we do 100s, 200s, 400s. And I was putting up times that probably they would want on the track team. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I knew that yeah. I was like, all right, like I'm a little faster than everybody. And mm -hmm. this was my freshman year. So everybody kind of looked at me and it was like, oh, like this kid can really run. We had some seniors running like six fives and yeah. and they thought they were fast. <laughs> and it was like, I kind of came out of nowhere and started yeah. blowing them out of the water in these races. And I was like, yeah, like, this a new level right here. I ain't gonna lie, you heard a lot of people feelings just now. When you said people thought that was fast and ran six five. You heard a lot of feelings just now. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too, is yeah. like some people are some people are fast, but they don't know how to use it. Right. So it's like that's what's the true. point of being fast if that you if you can't true. put it in your game? Yeah. That's that's facts, bro. So do you still do you still train it? Yeah. I trained it a lot. Gotcha. I probably trained my technique more than anything. Okay. Uh that's where I really that's the difference between People who are really fast and people mm -hmm. who are just mm -hmm. fast because yeah. they don't have the technique. They're not as sound when they run. They got a lot of loose movements, mm -hmm. probably things that aren't helping them. So I'm just trying to, movie, yep. at this point, I'm really trying to just clean out those uh, inefficiencies and then keep moving forward and, and just really get stronger. Let me ask you this, see if you, I know you know, but all fast people who can really run, the ground feels like a trampoline a little bit sometimes. Like you, you feel, like you know, you like you, you bouncy. Yeah. Like, like you know if you got it that, that you walking like, oh, I got a little bounce in my step. You know, like the, the ground feel, you know, bouncy. And so my side, I know other fast people, I'm like, y'all can't relate, you know. Harry don't feeling. know about that. Harry don't know Harry about don't that. Know. That, that ground feeling like a trampoline. Pull, we can pull the numbers yeah, up. Like you we feel can pull the bouncy. numbers up. You feel like you gliding. You feel like you just yeah. floating, though. Pull, Shout the out the clock. pull the numbers up. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, talk about, uh, we on the speed part. As a base stiller, everybody base stillers, man. Like you mentioned, you can be fast, but you don't know how to use it in the game. To be a good base stiller, Talk about the mindset that you have, because as we know, in Vandy, we use the term green mindset, you're a green runner. And so I can be a green runner, but a red mindset. Right. It means I got the wheels, but it's not clear up here. No. You know, I'm not, I'm not aggressive up here in my head, so I'm, I'm, I'm limited. And there's a lot of people who are who are vice versa. And the, Facts. They True. might be a blue or a red runner, but they got good instincts. It, yeah. yeah. And they can, they can use that. So talk about just your, when you're on the base path, before you get, talk about just the, for kids to learn first, just what you look at and that type of thing, what you looking for. Do you go off the, I know that, do you go off the pitcher, you go off the catcher, uh, educate them a little bit. And then after that, give us like the mindset. Yeah. The, the, the killer. Uh, let's see. I'll start with uh, what I'm looking for. I look for 
I'm not even looking it's anywhere something. lower body, mm -hmm. like legs, ankles. I'm not looking at feet. So mm -hmm. a lot of pitchers have block moves nowadays. Yeah. So I'm literally looking at like his back left pocket on his pants. Mm -hmm. So I'm staring at that one area right there. Because if I see a little bit, like if I see a little bit of uh, unbalance in those pants, I'm mm -hmm. going. And uh, this is something I probably taken ownership over since I've been in college, probably I would say the most is doing like film before, mm, yeah. knowing who's behind the plate helps yeah. mm -hmm. because they have tendencies too. And a lot of the catchers in college give away what the pitcher's about to throw Fact. from mm. how they set up. Talk they don't even show. understand. And yeah. they have no idea, especially now with the one knee and they're all setting up on one knee. Yeah. Some Thank of them you. drop one knee. Bent. It's a breaking ball every time. <laughs> or it's a fastball. It's, it, so they have different tendencies with certain guys. So it's like, I might be looking in there but I'm my eyes are really focused at the plate because yeah, I'm I'm peeking in there to see how he's setting up or where he's setting up, and that might give it give me everything I need to to just be able to go. Yeah, Facts. okay. But also, so that's like the more technical part of it of base stealing. Yeah. Bro. Like me personally, I was kind of like soft focus, so I'll kind of just look in a general direction, and it was more just. It went too technical. Like sometimes you just know. Like it's yeah. a feeling. Like you can't really explain it a little bit. Well, that's where I've gotten to now. I guess yeah, you could say. Yeah. Uh, when I first got to school, I had no confidence in my really? my stealing ability. Wow. I was fast, but I didn't know how to steal. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And that, it that's took fair. That's fair. Conversations with Corbs in his office, and he talking about here, take a take the biggest brush you have and just start drawing on it when you go out there. He's like, I don't care if you get thrown out when you get to first, just go. Mm -hmm. I take a good jump and shut it down like three steps later because I was like, damn, like what if I'm out? Yeah. That was just me as a freshman. And wow. I just kind of built That's up crazy. confidence after like a, a, a period of time. It was yeah. like the, my fall was full of struggles. So then yeah. I built up my confidence. And once I got into the season, it was like, I know what I'm doing and I could do this. So I just started going. Jeez. And at that point, it's like, I'm faster than than anybody out here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm better than you and you gotta yeah. make a perfect throw to get me out. So therefore I'm just gonna go. A perfect throw, a perfect yeah. exchange, a tag. There's so many variables. numbers, 46. If, if 46 thing, with no cause stealing, bro. Like I know there'd be times I might've got like four or five in a row, six in a row without getting thrown out. But bro, you went 46 without getting thrown out. If there's one thing that's wrong in that equation, you're not going to get me or you're not even going to have a chance for it to be close. So mm. I'll take my odds at any mm. day of the week. Say that again? I'll take my <laughs> odds any Come day on of the now. week. Come on Talk your shit, bro. So like your mindset, when you're stealing, just run in general, I never, I personally never cared about the catcher because all this catcher has an arm. Like, I, I don't care. You know, I'm not, you, you don't matter to me, you know. I'm on, I'm on you right here. I'm gonna steal in these first two to three steps, you know. So like, my my mind says like I didn't care who it was. I'm I'm going, you know. So like, speak to like, like the mindset outside the technical part of it. Yeah, that's pretty much. I have the same mindset, but now it's a, it's changing a little more for me just because people know what I'm gonna do. Mm, yeah. So they might mix in a pick and. The pitchers aren't smart enough at this level to to be able to control the run game without their pitching coach, and that's mm. just a simple fact. It's like we have Brownie over there calling all the picks for our pitchers, and it's like you go around the, the country, every other school is doing that yeah, too. Yeah. So mm. it's now a little more like a chess match, I, I would say, knowing what their tendencies are and how they might attack me. So mm. I just go out there and nothing changes for me. It's like I still have the same confidence, but maybe I have to be a little more selective on when I'm going to go. It's like, you know I'm going, but it's yeah. more of a matter of like when. Right. So then now it's that's where my game is kind of transitioning to I'm learning tendencies from yes. pitching yeah. from like pitching coaches. That's huge. Learning so I know yeah. what I'm doing when I get out there and nothing changes for me. Do you feel like from on the professional side, you talk about when you were coming out of high school, how you were kind of overlooked and now you went to the college stage and performed. Do you think the game has changed a little bit over these last three to four years on the professional side where launch angle was kind of big back then. Yeah. It's, still, it's still in the game, but do you believe that speed is starting to make more of an impact within the game of baseball? For sure. Because if you look at uh, MLB averages, they're right down there. And guys are hitting 30 bombs and hitting 200, yeah. striking out 150 to 200 times. And he's like, all right, like, 
that's making money right now. But these pitchers are throwing 102 sinkers that are moving about this wide. And you're not going to be yeah. able to just sit in the box and try and hit the home run. Nah. So you got to take your base hits. You got to take your walks. And yeah. then now speed speed's a factor. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you need people who can play defense. Yeah. Mm. That's something that's probably more Facts. overlooked out, out of anything on, yeah. in the pro game right now is, is people and their ability to play defense. You can't go to the next level and just be a DH. No, nah, not at all. Mm -hmm. Who would you say inspired your game? Kind of who do you base your game off out there? Yeah, it's been a, there's been a couple people that I've, I've really looked at. Uh, a lot of people talk about Kenny Lofton. That's yeah, somebody that's yeah. like before my time, but yes, I've done my research and yeah. my history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you look at when you look at people who can run, you look yeah. at Ricky. Yeah. You know, Ricky. Yeah. Ricky yeah. was the probably the first person to he probably played with the most swag back Come then. On he now. did his own thing. Man. So yeah. and he's uh, he's the stolen base king. So like when I look at guys like that, I'm like, like that's that's for real. Those are people who are able to impact the game on on all levels. Yeah. Modern day, I'm looking at guys like Byron Buxton. Mm. And I, I mm. talk about him a lot. Mm -hmm. Just because I've seen what he's been able to to turn himself into, he's a he's a five tool guy. He's For got sure. speed like no other, and he could hit a ball four fifty. And he's playing hell of a defense. So yeah. I think guys like him and those two other guys I've mentioned, it, those are my top three when I'm looking at guys like that. I'm trying to model my game after or or be like in the future. No, that's real, man. I guess you, you mentioned defense and. We all know you got a gold glove to your name. And to say that in college, that's a very, very, like, special thing to say. You don't see that a lot, even out of some of the higher-level defenders. Just It's just because it's very prestige in college. But for me, it's like, when uh, – have you always been good at defense? Like, has that always been something that you – come easy to you maybe or natural to you? Or was it something you really had to work at and really had to start to develop? I'd say it's always been pretty easy for me. That's probably the part of my game that came to me the easiest. Gotcha. And that's just flat out, like from a natural standpoint. Um, now that I've gotten older, I've kind of trained my my mindset to, to put myself in probably harder positioning and, and mm. in terms of mm. being able to cover certain gaps, certain spaces on the field. But it's like I use my the live O live D segment that we mm. have. Yeah. I use that. And that's everything to me. Yes. The the drills help, but those kind of are, are like a little warm up. Yeah, yeah, that's sure. like an infielder doing uh certain like pick drills to yeah. start or the routine hands type stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, that's more like routine. But when I get into that live O live D segment, that's like my game. game yeah. I'm playing a game every day of the week in training, and I'm gonna play the batters where I'm, I'll play them in the game because mm -hmm. I want to really challenge myself and see what I can do, what I can't do. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'm working with the sun in my face. I want to be able to to get used to certain angles, see yeah. what angles I can run at, what I can't. So that that's where I really take my game on defense right there. It's like I don't think there's, there's a lot of people who are able to day in, day out, put in the work mm -hmm. to make sure that they're on top of their stuff out there. Yeah. Go a little deeper with the Lavo Lav D and you challenging yourself because I, we know what you're talking about. Break Maybe down, some yeah. don't know what you're talking about, but like, for example, like how important I, I would like on purpose play shallow yeah. on somebody who I know will hit it over my head. So I'm trying to see how shallow I can get so I can get that ball. So like, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So basically, there's a lot of guys who go out on the field. And they'll play a straight up straight. standard position for mm. a guy like me, mm. for a bigger hitter, mm -hmm. righty, lefty, it doesn't matter. They're gonna stand in the same spot. And for me, like that's pretty that's useless. Pretty useless. Yeah. It's like I, I'm out there and it's like, all right, let's say I got a guy like Parker Nolan in the box. And if you know his strengths, he he can really drive the ball oppo mm -hmm. and he can spin it now. Yeah. But I'm still gonna give him his space and I'm gonna play oppo. Yeah. So I'm literally taking that right there. And then a guy on the other side, I might be in the right center gap, but then I also got to know where the, the two guys next to me are yeah. and what we're covering. So mm -hmm. we got to be communicating the entire time. And it's just being able to do that for every hitter on your own team. Mm -hmm. When you get to the weekend, it's pretty easy. It's Cause yeah. they'll talk to you about, we want you to play this positioning this weekend for this guy. And you, you have an, an idea already in your mind. You're not 
struggling to figure it out in the third, fourth inning. Uh, oh, what adjustment can we make on this guy? It's like that that rarely has to happen because we're so informed on, on the front side of it. Yeah. I guess on the Live Alive D, kind of break it down even more. Like how intense are Live O and Live Ds at Vandy? Like we talked about it in the last segment, basically. Like we would we'd be talking shit to each other. Like we're out yeah. there, like we're yelling at each other. Like mm-hmm. I remember Boo would be in the outfield, Ro would be in the outfield, I'm in the infield. And if I bobble a ball or if I don't make, I hear like they're Bricks. yelling, they're yelling, <laughs> yelling from the outfield Oof. to make sh- like yelling yeah. at me. So like how, what is it really like to be in that type of the environment? Atmosphere. Yeah. Oh, you're going to feel some pressure for sure. Yeah. And you're going to feel pressure like if you were playing Friday night in a big SEC uh, weekend, you're going to hear too hot. Mm-hmm. People are going to get their feelings yeah. hurt. Facts. They're going to get upset. But it's going to be like that if you play an yeah. actual game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The fans are going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. They're going to be loud. So you got to get used to it. But we're giving each other that energy because we know what it takes. It's like older guys have been there before. So our freshmen need to kind of get yeah. adjusted to it as fast as they can. So we're trying to help them out. And, and we're going to talk talk shit to each other. We're going to be loud, create a bunch of energy. And it's, it's probably the most intense segment we have. So um, I'd say it's a, probably a lot different than how other teams take BP, and that's a that's a given. How we yeah. take our our pregame is the same way, mm-hmm. and uh, it it just kind of helps us prepare because we're not trying to bridge a gap between training and gameplay. Nah. We're training yeah. like if we're actually playing a game. It's game on. Yeah, yeah. It, it's for sure a game. Like, yeah, there's no there's no doubt about that. Tuesday through Friday. Yeah, uh, in off season. Kind of want to dial it back a little bit. You talk about the training environment, and how. You talked earlier about your struggle that you went through as a freshman. And most people may look at you like, man, you're all American, SEC freshman year, two time all American. Like, you struggle. Like, talk about how you went through that process and how you improved on those things. Talk about it from an on the field perspective and an off the field perspective. There's a lot of days where I went back to my room as a freshman and I was like, do I do I belong mm. on this Everybody, team? Hey, my, <laughs> on this team. Hey, hey, everybody you be got standing that in the shower, around. just letting the water hit you. You just like hey, contemplating. I, I call my dad and be like, Dad, uh, I, I had three at bats today. <laughs> <laughs> struck, I struck out three times. Hey. Didn't swing the bat. <laughs> my my first scrimmage, I had three strikeouts. Mm. Went back to my dorm, and I actually I was on the field walking off. And Brownie looked at me and he was like, hey, man, whatever you do tomorrow is going to be better than what you did today. <laughs> and I was like, damn. I'm like, <laughs> Imagine crazy. hearing that as that's a freshman. Bad, and he was like, you, you all bad. probably heard the same things <sighs> and stuff sim- like yeah. that or like something similar. Yeah. But that's what it was like. There's a lot of those days where the game was just really fast. And it's like, I didn't play a senior year of high school. I mm. played like 10 games because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I barely played in the summer. I played in like some little league, but yeah. it wasn't really like serious. I say it's different, bro. So when I got there, you have guys like Kumar and they're yeah. they're loud. Like he strike you Lighter. out and talk shit to you right oh, there. Yeah. So it's like, like that. You be walking off the mountain, and you're like, damn, like, is this how it is? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, like, segueing into this, so, like, would you, what would you say was, like, your, was that moment was, like, your wake up, like, oh, yeah, this is college baseball for me. Yeah. Your freshman year, that moment for you was, that was it? No, I, I would say it was uh, the moment where I sat in my exit meeting as a freshman with Corbs, mm. and he looked at me, and he was like, yep, your defense is pretty good. You're gonna be able to play defense, um, but I don't think you could hit 200 in the SEC. Damn! And I, I said, "Wow!" Like, <laughs> I'm like, "Is is he being for real?" And he's like, hey, "I'm sitting, so I'm serious. sitting in front of him with like a blank face, like had no idea what to say." Yeah. And it's like I just got up out of his office and I, that that, that went. I went home like. I was like, oh, I got to figure something out and figure it out like fast. Uh, But I say like that was my moment for me. It was it was hearing like I don't think you can hit 200 in the SEC. And I was like, wow, like Mm. that's bad. But I I figured it out. And it's like it takes time. It's so hard for for people who come to our level and they think it's going to be like instant. And some people actually click that fast. But it's like it's very rare. It's few guys that are that are able to make something click. And it's like I played my freshman year because we needed somebody in, in the outfield just to be able to to man the outfield and cover mm-hmm. center field, and I was I was the best fit. Yeah. But they told me they were going to put me in the lineup, 
and see what I could do. And I kind of just got a couple hits here, a couple hits there. I blunted a lot as a freshman yeah. and that kind of like boosted my confidence. That's yeah. why I got in the box. I was like, I could really do this yeah. now at this mm -hmm. level. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Bro. Give us what you can. Okay, give us a, cause everybody has a story of getting threatened to get kicked off the team. And I wanna know if you got that story uh, like everybody else does. You got a story from Coors or yeah. like that. Uh, got in trouble my freshman year, a week into me being on campus. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It and, always uh, happens. <laughs> it happens like that, huh? At that time, it was the COVID restrictions and mm. and stuff like that. So there, Vandy was super strict on, yeah. you can't do this, you can't do that. And I had a couple of people in my room, uh, just probably Friday, Saturday night, like yeah. just hanging out. And next thing you know, on Monday, uh, Corey texted me, said, come see me. Cool. Text my roommate that too. I'm like, oh, like, I wonder what this could be about. <laughs> You know, I was like, yeah, I wonder if he just wants to talk to us. And he, mm -hmm. he sat down, or I sat down in his office, and, and he just started talking to us. But he wasn't even, like, yelling at us. Calm but it was like he was the calm demeanor that he has. And I would say, like, that's the most scary part about Corbs is when he's not yelling at you, but he's, like, disappointed. Mm. And he was yeah. like, yeah, like, I don't know if, uh, if this is going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if this is going to work out. Um, we must not have looked at your character traits when mm. we got here. Damn. And that know. was like a week into school. It's like I was scared the rest of the semester. Like I was, was like straight and I was, narrow. I wasn't playing any games because I'm like, I need this. Like this means a lot to me. So I can't just give it up over something stupid. But yeah, that was that was my one story where uh, mm. he told me I probably wasn't going to make it there. Nah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's it. Be getting like that. Um, I guess for you, it's kind of it's kind of dope to see like how you've evolved offensively. To me, um, like everybody knows you as the base stealer and and the defender, but like you got to get on base. And like even you saying like nobody really knew what they were gonna get out of you offensively at the beginning, but now to turn into what you are. My, I guess where I'm going with it is how do you continue to evolve? So everybody knows you can bunt. They playing in, like, they're not going to let you do that anymore. So, like, what – how are you trying to evolve your game to that? And what's the next level for you? Next level is probably being consistent with my own tool set. And it's mm -hmm. like that's where I, that's yeah. where I see myself going strengths. to the next level and being elite is yeah. my consistency level, but not consistently uh, trying to be somebody I'm not. Right. It's like consistent. Facts. See yeah. on my game, my tool set and what I'm good at. I'm gonna give you gap to gap. I'm gonna be able to bunt. I'm gonna drive some balls out. I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna steal bases. Mm -hmm. If you don't wanna pitch to me, I'll take a free walk because that's Thank might you. as well a double or a triple, triple to me. That. So that's where, where I look at as being elite. And it's like, I've kind of, I have been able to, build good pieces but i haven't bridged it together to my liking yet mm -hmm. so that's where i'm looking to go next the standard the standard you had some some big moments at vandy obviously we know the accolades but talk about the college world series and not a bat you had when you drove in the game when it Stanford, run. right? Stanford, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, dumb lit. Hey, yeah. I, dumb I was lit. Game time. Was it the game when they were on the game time? Yeah, game time. Game time. time. I think Javi was, was on. That. It was Javi yeah, on first, first, right? Yeah. Javi, Javi led off the inning with uh, like a with a walk, and he took a three pitch. Two outs, right? Yeah, yeah. Two, two, outs, outs. two outs. He took a three two pitch, probably about this close off. Yeah. Spencer hasn't played in a month. Facts. Hadn't had an at bat in a month and came up and just drives the ball through the sixth hole and runs it out. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's first and second. Oh no, it's first and third. First and third. Because they threw the ball away on the pick. Yeah. So yeah. Javi scored. Got the third. Okay. And I came up against Brendan Beck and Brendan Beck probably had the best curveball I've probably hey. seen in college. <laughs> that thing was nasty, nasty though. Yeah. <laughs> he hey. struck me out in the seventh inning. It was so I sharp. remember that you pissed. Yeah, and I was pissed. He struck me out in the seventh inning. I was pissed. And I remember going back, like having my moment. I was still young, like very yeah. emotional. You I was in a helmet? big moment. Yeah, of course I slapped my helmet. <laughs> and of course the ESPN cameras right there. They, they catch Boy, everything they got, too. Yeah. They got the mics everywhere, yep. cameras everywhere. You can't sneeze. You, you got to go hide behind in the back somewhere for mm -hmm. something no like that. But yeah. literally 
I slammed my helmet and Bax was like, like, just get back in the game. Like, we're going to need you right here. Come back up my ninth inning. I'm getting ready to hit. The two guys get on in front of me. And I just remember like getting to the plate and like saying to myself, I was like, if you're going to go down, you're going to go down your way. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. Yeah. And it's like, everybody always asked me about that moment. Like, were you expecting a curveball? It's like, I can't tell you what was going to my mind in that moment. I wasn't expecting anything. I got in the box. I literally remember like taking a deep breath, stepping in. And next thing you know, that ball just popped and I just saw it. I swung, brought in the the game time run. And then I I remember being at first base with Mass and just losing my mind. Like, Go I went crazy. crazy. <laughs> Go yeah. crazy. I was like blacked out. <laughs> yeah, Black it's like, I don't out. remember any out of, of it. Out of body experience. Unless yeah. I watch it. I yeah. can't tell you what I felt in the moment because it was just, I wasn't even there at that point. I was just so excited. And then uh, the wild pitch came and just winning that game, that that was, that's probably one of my favorite games that I played in college. That was one of the yeah. best games a, to watch game too, man. Yeah. I was, that game was lit. I was like, Dude. Yeah. So why are we talking about the World Series, man? Let's talk about, from a player perspective, everybody's been in the setting, the hotel, the bus ride, the locker room. I don't know if y'all did like the opening ceremony. I don't know if y'all got a chance no, to do that. No, they didn't. They okay. didn't have that. They didn't do that? Yeah. Okay. Because of COVID. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. But just like get, paint us a picture, your own personal picture of, of your year, um, of like the College World Series. Like walk us through it, you know, like a movie. Like talk to us about it. Yeah. So it's always got to start with the, with the the plane ride. Yeah, I think that's the most important. Yeah. It's like exclusive. Yeah. We haven't put on a suit all year, mm. but here we are, and we're putting on a suit now. Right. So we got. I went to the mall with Hobby. <laughs> I went yeah, to the mall I, with I, Hobby. I saw that picture. Of that boy had the what, what type of glasses you had on? I had the Versace, Versace shades. Versace shades on. <laughs> Hobby, he one up me. He probably did double the damage I did in that mall, but he went Louis V shades. Man. Hold on. What kind of, hold on, pause. Yeah. I was, what kind of per diem y'all got going on? Well, we, were, we were at the huh? SEC uh, tournament, yeah. and we used that per diem when we I'm got I'm going to say, they, they broke us up, too. I saved all mine, for sure. Oh, yeah. But I'm not, not enough saving to buy, mine. Not enough to buy no Louis V shades, though. He went and he bought his Louis V shades. Okay. I bought Versace shades. Uh-huh. We had... Everybody had on their J's with their suits. Of course, nice no, tie. No. Corb said, "If you need a tie, like, just let me know. I'll go grab one for my house." So we had. I had one of Corb's. I think it was like a red tie on, yeah. and I was just clean <laughs> cut, fitted. ready to go. So we hit the plane and straight to the the tarmac. Mm-hmm. Look at our ID like that, and you just continue walking. You got all the nice plane pictures. Mm. Smooth ride to Omaha. When we get there, the first thing we do, we always do when we get there, is go look at the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. We go yep. look at the stadium, take a nice group picture yep. outside the um, the statue, the statue. Mm-hmm. and then we head on to the hotel, get our get ourselves situated. I think the first thing we do there is an Omaha Prime yeah. dinner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we go to Omaha Prime, beautiful steakhouse, one of the best, and we sit down and everybody's eating them. 14 inch fat, steak, yeah. a nice fat steak. We got sides coming around the table. And at this point, it's like we travel with, with 60 people probably in regular season game, like regular season weekend. Damn. Because we got media team. That's right. We got everybody. And yeah. Omaha, you guys know, we're traveling probably 100 deep yeah. because we have families. Yeah. We have yeah. uh, other staff members across the street that we don't really see on a normal I about that. daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Like daily. Uh, uh, compliance, yeah, people. all those yeah. people that are, part of the yeah. Baseball. You Come. getting on that flight and you start seeing face. You like, like, hold on, see you yeah, all here. here, right? So Everybody. literally, uh, half the time the plane's empty, but this time the plane is full. Mm-hmm. It's like we take the biggest jet mm-hmm. and it's still packed. So we have everybody go over there. Then we we kind of get to chill out. We chilled out for I think a day, started training, and then uh, I, were we the first game? I don't know if we're the first game or not, but. I remember just walking around and just wanting to go see other teams play yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. to see it as a fan because yeah. that was the coolest thing it for is. me. And it's like walking around and like little kids running up to me like, hey, can I take a picture? Like, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I genuinely yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, Going and sitting in the outfield and watching two teams play, it's like, damn, like that's I play cool. right there mm-hmm. and that's what it looks like. When I'm on the field, but this is what it looks like just from the, the stand. So it's like I'm de- I'm seeing 
Take I'm doing win. something that a lot of people wish they they were doing. Facts. So I got to be grateful for it. Yeah. And yeah. that's kind of how I took it. I took every opportunity to go and just walk around like the little tents. And like if people wanted to take pictures, I was taking pictures, going to other games, just giving people the opportunity to be able to say like, hey, like, let's take a picture. Yeah. And he's like, I'm always open to that. So that was probably the coolest part of Omaha for me. But at the end of the day, it was like, it was business. Yeah. Yeah. Like we still had a job we needed to do, but our year was super weird, especially with like the COVID NC state situation mm -hmm. is like, yeah. we got, we took a huge hit and we got a lot of crap for that. Yeah, it was, but it's like, no, it we couldn't do anything about it. And we had nothing to do with it in the yeah. first place. So it was like, yeah. it sucked for them. Mm -hmm. And that's not how we would wanted to do it, but we couldn't control it Yeah, at the end of the day. So, but it was, it was a good experience. Uh, I definitely, I take a lot from that. And I'm looking to do that again this year, so. Yeah. As far as, it's like the NC State thing, um, all that stuff is going on. Like you said, you can't control none of that. But as a fan and me watching, also me being part of the program, I'm looking at it and I'm watching Vanderbilt kind of be looked at as a villain. Yeah. Now. Like we go from uh, like yeah. the nice oh, guys yeah. and like just... Oxford type, and then now we looked at as like the villain, and yeah. I'm like at home. I'm like in my head. I'm like hot. <laughs> I'm like f him. Like I, 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 in my head, I'm yeah. like f him. Like yo, like embrace, embrace it. Like embrace being the villain. Oh, okay, like, and that's kind of what we what we did. So when we got to Mississippi State and we went out on the field, you know, we don't we don't take um, infield outfield nah. before the game. So we'll take our, our BP, head inside, and when we're all dressed, we'll come out for a team restretch. Mm -hmm. And I remember Hammer being out there, and he just came to the locker room and was like, you guys are ready? Like, just meet me at five. So he was already out there, and we came out onto the field, and Mississippi State probably had 24,000 people in that place. Yeah. And they just started raining booze, and we all kind of embraced it. Yeah. And we put up that, that seven spot in the first inning against them. And we're like, yeah, like, yeah, like we're like, here. Oh, like, yeah. we're going to embrace being the villains. And mm -hmm. if that's what you want to, like, want to paint us as, yeah. like, we're going to go ahead and do it. So I remember, like, vividly walking out into the field for stretch mm -hmm. and just hearing those boos. And we're all like, yeah, like, this is this mm -hmm. what we came to do. Yeah. yeah. Nah, because Omaha, man, is so... Like the autographs, the pictures, and it's a lot. Like yeah. it's, it's a lot, but like you welcome it because you know it's a privilege, and you know it's not gonna always be like this. It's gonna stop at, at one point. It's gonna stop, you know. Yeah. And so like you, you sign every autograph, you take every picture. Like you say, you go to the tents, you know, you go to the games just to be a fan, you know, just like dang, just embrace it all. Like one of the best parts to me. Um, you know, we had the, 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 the nearest hotel to the park, just like that police escort yeah. to the game. It's yeah, like you yeah, like you shutting tough. the city down like low key. You know, you got two behind you, two two or three in front, and it's like, dang, we exclusive. Yeah. You know, we exclusive, man. What hotel you guys stay at in nineteen? The one that so like, you know where the field is? Yeah. Like right it's behind like the field. The closest one. Yeah. To the to the field. So like you know where the little like tent sections was where yeah. all the stuff. So like, it's the like minute right you there. walk out of that, we're right there. What's the little restaurant on the corner? No one knows. Um, it was like a three minute drive for us, bro. I'll be honest with you. What's the restaurant? Ours was a little longer, but we stayed at like the double tree. Oh, yeah. And I remember oh, saying at the double tree and Yeah, y'all was in the ghetto. Yeah, that's yeah. probably double the double tree the one was like it was open. I think they was they're nah, behind us. They're nah, behind. So it was too kind of close. I us, really, we could walk up like the street, turn right, and it'd be. I think that's what Michigan you, say. Yeah, there was. I think yeah. that's where they were. Where Michigan. The was. Double Tree. It was trash. Yeah, yeah. probably the worst hotel we we've stayed at all year, and Dang. we kind of just got the luck oh, of the draw. Oh. And it's true. It's like, like Tennessee had the nicest hotel, but they went zero two. They got bounced. <laughs> so they were gone. <laughs> Yeah. And that, that was yeah, quick. And yeah. I'm like, why can't we come over to this spot? Because their hotel, we had to go over there for COVID testing mm -hmm. that year. And uh, where I was like, damn, this is real nice. But I remember, uh, I think that when we lost the NC State game, being in the lobby, waiting for the elevators and just being posted up against like a wall. And there's a painting behind me. And I literally was just like this. And the painting just dropped and broke, all shattered all over the floor. Dang. And everybody's looking at me because they, they think like I punched it or something. Yeah. 
And I was simply just standing there just waiting for the there. elevators yeah. to go back to my room. So I got, I remember I told, uh, I told Amy about that and she called the hotel and the hotel was like, oh, like, it's fine. Like, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, then the night before game three, I went to go take a shower after losing game two. I turn on my, my tub. Actually, Kev Collins is next to me in the room. Mm -hmm. I hear him turn the shower on and the water just start coming up in my tub. No. Oh, so it was like it was about we got back pretty late and it was about one something already. And Jack Bolger and I had to change rooms completely, grab all our stuff, brutal, and go upstairs like four or five floors into a new room. And we didn't finish doing that until like two something. Damn. Then we had to wake up for breakfast like seven something. So like, we kind of just hurried up, did that. My people were downstairs, so I saw my family for a little bit. And I just went to bed and woke up trying to win game three. 